Home Church is church made simple. We're in the middle of an ongoing pandemic, and church is going to look different than it did in the past. And that's okay. In this season, our hope is to see churches meeting in all kinds of creative spaces. In fact, we've already seen churches that are meeting um, in parks, on walks, um, in yards, and in living rooms. The key is uh, circling up some people you feel comfortable with and meeting consistently. Our heart is to see you spiritually growing in this time. Now, if you're currently hosting a group or you're interested in hosting a group and want to know more information, um, just email us at info at whitewaterchurch.org and we'll get you started. Hey guys, it's John. Welcome to Whitewater Church. It's never been easier to invite somebody to church. Just copy the link and share it with a friend. Stay tuned at the end for Whitewater Kids or click the link below and head there right now. We hope you enjoyed the service. You don't withhold your love from us Arms open wide upon a cross You give no matter what the cost And Jesus, we see you And all of these words Just echoes of your grace Jesus we see you Jim is
Whitewater Church, so good to be here with you. Um, This is a place you can belong before you believe, and our goal is to help everybody move forward on their spiritual journey. Today, we're talking about uh, the ancient practice of prayer. Uh, Prayer is simply talking with God. It's a foundational practice for anybody who follows Jesus. And right now, we are facing so much pressure. In our culture, there is pressure everywhere you look, and it's dividing people and causing all kinds of issues. And pressure doesn't always cause the cracks in our life. It often reveals the cracks that were already there. They just get bigger and more more noticeable. And when we're facing those the pressures in our our marriages and our friendships and our our jobs and our, our life, Uh, often God is the last person we turn to when he probably should be the first person. We want to give you a model prayer that's actually from Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. And I want to encourage you to uh, start praying through that prayer. It's, It's known as the Lord's Prayer. But this model prayer is something that will really help you um, begin a prayer life or maybe sustain a prayer life, depending on where you're at. But I want to introduce my friend Tammy Berkelid. She is an agent for change in our community through her business, but she also is a, a, a pastor of our church. She's on our executive team, and uh, I'm so excited for you to hear from her today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For For thine is the kingdom kingdom and and the power power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Hi, everyone. I'm so glad to be here with you today. I'm excited. We're going to talk about prayer. Prayer is actually one of the simplest but yet the most foundational parts of our faith. Um, It is so important to our relationships. One, our relationship to Jesus. Prayer is our connection to the Lord. And I think some people are intimidated by it. Um, They think they need to wait and pray, like they're going to write out their prayers or they're going to think through um, you know, the best way to speak to the Lord and make sure that it's organized or whatever. And I think I would just encourage you to, to pray when you feel the urge to pray. You know, sometimes if you wait till the end of the day, you might have forgotten some of the things that were important. And the Lord wants to hear from you all the time. I think back to my own first experience um, with prayer, and um, I was a six-year-old little girl. My grandma was super important to my faith, and she was always an example for me. And she um, started working on teaching me the Lord's Prayer. I have carried that throughout my life, and that is one of the most important things to me. When things rock my world, I go back to that 
that place that I've had since I was small. And the thing I do with it now is instead of our Father who art in heaven, I, I change it all around so that it's just me and God. And I say, you know, my Father in heaven. And I change it so that it's just between He and I. And it provides me a tremendous sense of comfort. And that's how simple prayer can be. It can be something that matters to you, that connects you to God. It can be a conversation. It can be, um, you know, I, I pray a lot when I'm on the road. Um, I have tons of time um, that I'm actually on the road, and I think that's a beautiful time to pray. Um, I like to think about prayer um, in kind of four parts, and I'll kind of go through those with you and like explain what they mean to me. Um, praise is the first one, and I think that's that's demonstrating our love for the Lord. That's that's um, worship. That's um, that's just showing how we love God and how important He is in our life, and we we're you know being grateful for all He is in our world. Um, the next one would be petition, and that is like asking. Um, when your heart is hurting, you're asking for um, peace. When when fe things feel chaotic, you know these are things we're we're dealing with every day right now. And and I'm always asking like for sound judgment. Um, you know we're going to the Lord and saying, look, I have some concerns. Will you be in this with me? The next one is intercession, and and that is uh, praying on someone else's behalf. So. You have so many people in your world that you love. Um, you have people that will reach out to you and ask, will you pray for me? And that is, for me, that's something that happens to me every day. And I take that very seriously. And I go to the Lord on their behalf. And I think it's an honor. And then the last one is thanksgiving. And I, I would say sometimes this is the most important thing um, because, yes, the Lord wants to hear us be thankful. Um, but gratitude helps so much with how we're feeling about everything else. You know, before we think about our prayers, we might even start with gratitude because that allows us to recognize how many good things are happening in our world. That allows us to focus on um, all God has done for us. And I think that that's such an important component. The verses that I love in the Bible that I feel like kind of touches on all of these things, and it's something that has been a very powerful verse for me um, through my life, is Philippians 4, 6. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. I like to use that as a guide um, because I think sometimes we can get into a certain place in life, um, whether it's our surroundings or whether we're going through something really difficult um, or whether things are going great and and um, we're, we're just thinking about praising at that time. And I think every person is at a different point. Everybody's at a different place and they might be feeling um, that it's difficult, say, to ask for things from the Lord. Sometimes we don't feel like we deserve that. And I I would just suggest to you that um, it's it's very important that you do that. That's part of the relationship with the Lord. He wants to know what you need, what you want, how you're feeling, all of those things. It's the same as a relationship with a partner or with um, you know a, a mother or a son. Any of those things, um, it's the same type of relationship. Um, maybe it's hard for you to feel grateful right now. Maybe Thanksgiving feels difficult because you're going through a challenging season. So I just encourage you, Hit all the marks because I think it's an excellent exercise in um, just having a well-rounded prayer life. Um, another thing I think is so important, not just our relationship with Jesus, but our relationship with others. Even when we can't be together in times like this today, um, it gives you the, a way to connect with them. It, you can intercede on their behalf. There are times when um, you you know someone's hurting and you're aching to do something. Um, we a lot of times we're like, what can we do that's practical? Well, how can we help them? Should, you know, should I make them a meal? Man, pray for them. And if you have the opportunity, pray with them. Don't miss that this is this is not just about friends. This is not just about family. We can pray for our enemies and we can have an impact in that situation. We can pray about our our coworkers. Uh, we can pray for 
um, our, our work. We can, you know, prayer touches everything. And James 5.16, I, I feel like it kind of uh, wraps up how important prayer is um, one to another. Um, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. God's working. So we say the words and then God's working. He's making prayer, turning it into something powerful. He hears us and then he, he is working behind the scenes for all things good. Sometimes it feels like, how, how long do I need to be praying? God doesn't always answer in our time, and we need to recognize that, and we need to know that. When I say He's working behind the scenes for all things good, He knows what's best for us, and He is going to answer the prayer in the way that we are best served, not just us, our friends we're praying for, our children. You know, it's hard sometimes to see prayer working um, in, in the now, in the present, but I can assure you that you can look back in your life and you can see the Lord answering. Some of us have children that are little and we pray that they sleep through the night or we we pray that they will stop fighting with their sibling or, you know, things like that. And, and then your children get older and they're making choices and your heart is breaking and you pray for their soul, you pray for their hearts. Um, and it gives you peace. It gives you a tremendous sense of peace knowing that you've turned it over to God. God heard you. You prayed and he heard you and now he's on it. He's with you. He's in your corner and he's on your side. There, there are days um, either with my work or with my family that I don't, I don't know what to do anymore. I'm not sure uh, what truth is between the um, media and politics and tensions that are happening in our country. COVID, obviously, um, a huge player in that as well. It's just a difficult time. And so I, I challenge you, ask yourself, with all the things going on, all the noise, whose voice are you listening to? Take this opportunity to sort of inject some new life into your prayer life. Um, you will reap great rewards from that. The last thing I want to say to you, because I miss you all so much, remember that even though we're separated right now, um, we are united in heart. We're going to take this opportunity wherever you are, because like I said, we're, we're separated. We might be in home church. Uh, we might be alone. We might be in our car listening to this. Wherever you are, we're going to take this opportunity to worship together. Michael has an awesome song. Uh, it's, it's a song about prayer and uh, it kind of breaks prayer down for us and gives us the opportunity to practice what we've been talking about today.
Right now um, is a really cool opportunity for us to take communion together. Communion simply is a time of remembrance and presence. It's remembering what Jesus did for us on the cross and how he uh, freed and forgave the whole world by sacrificing himself. And then it also is a time to practice the presence of Christ, that remembering that wherever two or three are gathered in Jesus' name, that Jesus somehow is present with them. Uh, his spirit is at work in that place, ministering to us and through us. And that practicing of God's presence is uh, something that has been done over the ages and it unites the church, whether we're living room to living room or Christians who have gone before us, we're connected in that moment, remembering the love of Jesus. Here's one teaching Jesus had on communion. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, giving thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And I want to encourage you to just grab some saltines or some bread or a tortilla like my daughter says, or some delicious sourdough if you've been making that, and uh, some grape juice or something that would represent uh, the wine. And the bread represents God's body and Christ, and the wine represents his, his blood that was spilt for us. And then we take a moment, pray, and then eat the bread, take the juice, and remember what God has done for you and thank him. That's simply taking communion together. I wanna to invite you to sing this song that's actually singing and practicing the Lord's Prayer. And as we do that, take time to connect to God together, right where you're at. Love you so much. Our Father who in heaven reigns, how great and mighty Your kingdom come, your will be done. Now here on earth as is above. Who oh, give to us our daily bread. And keep our hungry spirits fed. May all our satisfaction be In you whose grace has set us free So give us hope, give us faith Help us trust in your guidance From the depths of your grace You have richly provided Thank you Thank you, Father, you are all we need. Father, you are all we need. Forgive us all.
Hey guys, Michael Hart here. I miss seeing you guys' face so much, so till then, here's my face. Uh, we just want to thank you so much for your generosity during this time, especially financially. So if you want to partner with us financially, you can go to our website or you can just mail a check. We cannot do this without you. If you're interested in a more tangible way to be able to bless the community, email us at info at whitewaterchurch.org and we will connect you with one of our blessing teams. Love you so much. Take care. Thanks so much for joining us today. I. I'm honored to have been able to speak with you. I wanna encourage you to, to go back to those questions we talked about during this time. Whose voice are you listening to? Where are you turning? I wanna encourage you during this time to lean in to your prayer practice. You can click on the link to go to Kids Church. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next week.